Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Paving the Road from Recovery to Scalability, brought to you by IOFM and sponsored by Topalti. We do have a few housekeeping notes to go over before we officially get started. If you have any technical questions or issues using the webinar platform, please use the chat box and I will respond right away. If you have any issues with the audio, please click the phone icon to receive the teleconference information. Uh, for those that do need to call in to ensure call quality, everyone's lines have been muted today. Uh, to find the phone icon, it's on that lower level uh, toolbar. Just click that phone icon for the teleconference information. And the blue uh, bubble icon is the chat window. So if you click that, that will activate your chat window. If you happen to get disconnected, you can log on again using the instructions provided in your webinar confirmation email. But if you continue to experience difficulty, please email webinars at iofm.com and we will respond right away. We encourage you to ask questions throughout the webinar. Please type your questions into the chat box and hit send to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we will have our speakers answer questions. And if we're not able to get to all questions today, we will make sure uh, to forward them off to Topalte for you. We will also have four polling questions during this webinar. A pop-up box will appear when we run each poll. Please choose from the multiple choice answers and hit submit. We would love your participation and insight today. Finally, this webinar will be recorded and you'll receive a thank you email with the on-demand materials within three business days. This will include a link to today's live webinar as a recording, so you can play it back, as well as a PDF link of today's presentation. So again, please look for that in your inbox within the next three business days. And at this time, I'd like to introduce our speakers for today. We have Mark Brousseau and Derek Cheng. Over the past 26 years, Mark Brousseau has established himself as a thought leader on accounts payable, accounts receivable, payments, and document automation. A popular speaker at industry conferences and on webinars and podcasts, Brousseau advises prominent end users and solutions and services providers on how to use automation to improve document and payments-driven business processes. Brousseau has chaired numerous educational conferences and has served on several industry committees and boards. He resides in sunny Center City, Philadelphia with his wife and three sons. Derek Chang is the Senior Director of Corporate Marketing at Topalti, the leader in global payables automation. He leads the development of content and is the co-host of the Business Finance Friends podcast. He authored multiple white, he's authored multiple white papers and articles in the areas of finance operations and is an avid technologist for back office processes spanning a career of over 25 years. And at this time, I'd like to welcome our speakers and hand the presentation off to Mark. Thank you so much, Laura, and thank you all for joining us today. Just a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's webinar, to Palti. We wanted to thank you all for joining us today and acknowledge that we know that you're facing down some big challenges in accounts payable, new ways of working, new operational challenges, new risks, new economic pressures. But with all that told, the biggest challenge you face may lie ahead, and that is how it is that your business can go from just surviving in this new reality to positioning itself for scalability. Well, today's webinar is going to provide you with a roadmap toward recovery and toward scalability. We're going to discuss those challenges across the AP life cycle that many organizations are facing in today's remote working environment. We're going to talk about how remote working has changed and challenged the way that AP does things. We're going to provide you with some strategies for optimizing remote working, and we're going to share with you an action plan for putting the strategies we give you today to use in your own organization. But before we do all that, we wanted to start with a poll question, which is now displayed on your screen. We want to know, has remote work made it easier or harder to execute your accounts payable processes effectively? Has it been easier, harder? Has there been no impact from remote work? Or is that 
that you're not working remotely. Take a moment to respond to the poll question now displayed in your screen, and we'll discuss the results in just a moment. Derek, there's no question that the sudden shift to remote working created some pretty big challenges for AP departments. The question I have is, how are most departments doing today, months later after that shift to remote working? Oh, well, for everybody's benefit, I hope it has gotten better, but I imagine that there are still challenges, uh, particularly if there's paper-based processes within the organization. Uh, that's always uh, a critical step in terms of the workflow. But uh, yeah, I, I hope that people are getting through it. If not, you know, obviously there are some solutions out there. When Topalti hears from prospects, what is it they say is their biggest challenge right now? Uh, a lot of our current customer prospects, um, they're looking to do away with checks, uh, paper checks in particular, that's highly problematic. Um, but they're also using this as an opportunity to kind of shore up their controls, financial controls around how, pay, how to make payments, how to uh, ensure that uh, invoices are properly approved. And so they're, they're looking at this as actually an opportunity to to take the next step into a much more digitalized process. There's no question that adapting paper-based processes to remote work is hard, and that's true whether it's a paper invoice or a paper check. Do you believe that the move to remote working will finally be the death of paper invoices and paper checks? Um, as somebody who has to approve paper uh, invoices and my suppliers need uh, to be paid, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> we asked our attendees, has remote work made it harder to execute accounts payable effectively? I'm a little surprised by these results. 41% of our attendees say it is harder today. But look at this, Derek. 30% of our attendees on the line said there's been no impact. Presumably, these were the departments that were already pretty highly automated. But one in five folks on the line say that Remote work has made things easier. 7% said that they were not working remotely. Okay, Derek, I, I, I got to wonder here. What's going on with that one in five that say things are easier these days? Is it just that there's less banter at the water cooler to distract them from things? It, potentially. Maybe uh, maybe folks are a little antisocial. <laughs> <laughs> I was never into the birthday cake thing at the office. Hey, listen, I'm not going to let you people off the hook that easy. If you are one of the 20% that said things are easier, use your chat tool and let me know exactly what it is that has made things easier. I've, I've got to know the curiosity is killing me. Derek, they did such a great job with that poll question. Let's ask them one more. This time we want to know which part of the accounts payable life cycle has been impacted the most by your organization's move to remote working? Is it invoice receipt? Is it invoice data capture? Is it approvals workflow? Is it payment processing? Is it financial reporting, or are you one of those folks that were never working remotely and still aren't? And so there's been no impact. Take a moment to respond to the poll question now displayed in your screen. We'll discuss the results in just a moment. Derek, I reckon that one of the biggest changes in a remote working environment are those approval workflows. Talk to me about how it is that organizations are managing those approvals in an environment now where you can't simply put the invoice in a manila inner office envelope. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's a great anecdote that comes around to Paul T. Uh, we heard from a customer where um, the uh, accounts payable person uh, responsible for that job, they were basically driving around invoices and uh, checks, actually, to, uh, to their controllers and their CFO. Um, to basically get the approval and mail out checks uh, that way, and that was a that that's like worst case scenario, obviously. Um, but it certainly has happened where uh, you are running these manual processes, these paper processes, and trying to get things done. Uh, obviously, that's not scalable. Uh, that's got to be a hardship for everybody. And maybe one things that maybe people aren't considering are. Uh, the, the fact that you these are all independent steps naturally within an, an organization, um, and so you might be moving these things in, from one system to another, and that kind of a detachment of, of processes 
uh, is its own problem. And I don't know if maybe folks are just able to handle that uh, when they say things have gotten easier, um, or maybe they're not considering the fact that, you know, you're actually spending more time. You just don't realize it because you're at home. Yeah, it's a good question. We asked our attendees which part of the AP life cycle has been impacted the most by their organization's move to remote working. Warming your heart, Derek, 33% of the folks of the line said it's been payment processing that was most impacted. But look at this, 24% of our attendees said invoice receipt, 17% said approvals workflow. The common denominator there, Derek, is inescapable. It's paper. If you were receiving paper invoices through the mail, you probably couldn't get in the office to open that mail and to digitize those documents or worst case, to process them. And similarly, if you couldn't get in the office, you couldn't do check runs. And those workflow approvals are a whole lot harder when you have to, as you said, take those invoices and drive them across town. Talk to me about how it is that organizations have adapted their payment processes to this new remote work environment. What is it they've done in the short term and what will the long term likely look like, Derek? Um, well, hopefully, folks move away from just general paper checks. I mean, that's one of the big ones uh, to to print them out, to mail them, to uh, deal with them when they come back because you've mailed them to the wrong place. Uh, certainly, the, you know, that happens. Uh, duplicate checks that go out, this is always a problem. Uh, and also just requiring signatures if they are, uh, you know, if there's a controller or a CFO involved, um, engaging with that process, moving everything into more of a uh, electronic payments or digital payments uh, workflow, I think is super critical now, um, particularly for auditability and the ability to reconcile later. Uh, that streamlining that process, I think, gets you out of the weeds of this whole um, rigor memorial, uh around payments. So. Uh, definitely looking, I think most companies, as they're growing still, as they're scaling, as they're um, acquiring other companies, you know, trying to deal with that kind of mess, uh, I think moving that into a much more kind of prescribed process is probably where the future lies. If I had to summarize, I'd say you're telling these folks that the way they're doing things today may not be sustainable once the economy starts to bounce back. Is that fair? Uh, ideally, yeah. I mean, I think for companies that have have sights on you know re on their recovery, I think that they are looking for ways that they are not having to be burdened by this stuff later. Yeah. Well, on the surface, accounts payable doesn't sound so hard, right? Your supplier sends an invoice, you pay the supplier. Unfortunately, the reality is a whole lot more complicated and things are getting a whole lot more trickier in today's changing AP game. Now, when we look back, the inefficiencies in accounts payable all start from the moment we set up a supplier. In most of our businesses, it's not uncommon to add a supplier that you can't pay by law, or maybe you haven't received the necessary tax forms before paying a supplier. Then you gotta go and try to chase them down for them. In a lot of cases, we enter incorrect information on the supplier, invalid bank account information, or we create duplicate records for a supplier. And then invoice handling, well, that further complicates things. Now we've got to contend with multiple invoice delivery channels. And while we talk about declining paper invoice volumes, paper invoices probably won't completely disappear anytime soon. We also have potentially incorrect quantities or prices on our invoices. We have difficulty tracking down purchasers and then nagging them to get us an approval. And of course, through it all, we've got lots and lots of manual keying and paper shuffling. And things aren't much better when it comes to paying our suppliers. When you're using paper checks, it costs a whole lot more than ACH payments. Paper checks aren't traceable. It's hard to entice suppliers to accept early payment discounts when they have to worry about those paper checks and when they're actually going to arrive and the fact they don't have any visibility into that. And what's more, when you have 
paper checks, well, now you don't have any opportunities for cash back rebates like with cards. And in some countries, you can't even make a paper check payment. So while all these challenges with these manual and outdated AP processes arguably are new, the thing is, is that the move to remote working is exposing them and exacerbating them. It's making things a whole lot worse. And the thing is, is we don't know when we're going back to the office. Today, 91% of AP practitioners are working remotely. And we're also working longer. One third of accounts payable professionals are working longer hours. 8% of you are working an additional two hours per day. And that's really saying something when you consider that most AP professionals were already working long days long before the pandemic. And as a lot of AP managers have noted, many of you would be working even more hours if your business hadn't put the kibosh on overtime. Well, moving forward, it's pretty clear that remote working in some capacity is here to stay. Employees may be asked to continue working remotely to ensure social distancing. We don't know how our offices are going to be set up in the future. And the success of work from home during the pandemic well, is probably going to embolden some of our employers to offer more flexible work arrangements to employees. Hoteling is becoming a thing in the office space world. Many organizations, well, they're likely to offer remote work arrangements to recruit new talent to finance, such as millennials. And over time, well, yep, many of our businesses will probably downsize their office space because of the success of remote working arrangements. Now, this move to remote working has created a lot of new operational challenges and new risks for accounts payable departments. One quarter of AP leaders say they're concerned about fraud and compliance issues created by the way they're doing things during the pandemic. Think about Derek's example of driving invoices and checks around town. We've heard of lots of examples where established processes and procedures were turned upside down and shaken good for, <laughs> for good measure. In many cases, businesses have been forced to choose between circumventing checks and balances and simply getting suppliers paid. A lot of you are relying on email to onboard suppliers and to approve invoices. And this is a big reason that the FBI and Interpol, IRS, and even state's attorneys general are all warning that fraud attacks are on the rise. But it's not just risk that we're having to deal with. AP leaders also must contend with more calls and more emails from suppliers regarding the status of invoices. Studies show that it costs an average of $3.60 to respond to just a single inquiry from a supplier about the status of their invoice or their payment. Well, I know what you're thinking. $3.60 isn't a whole lot of money. But when you multiply it by all the calls and all the emails that your department receives each month, well, now we're talking big money. And the truth is, is that when employees are working from home, it's harder for them to chase down the information they need to resolve those inquiries. So it's probably costing you a whole lot more than $3.60 to resolve one of those inquiries. One in five of you are concerned about missing an invoice due date because of the operational disruptions caused by the pandemic. It's inarguable that it's harder to adapt manual invoice approval and payment processes to a remote work environment. And finally, 6% of AP leaders are concerned that their current processes don't provide senior management with the visibility into cash and spend that they need to navigate this crazy economy. Over the next several quarters, I think this is going to become an increasingly big problem. So when you put it all together, one in five AP leaders are concerned about their current processes for approving invoices and paying suppliers. 7% say they're overwhelmed by it all. 
But these aren't the only issues we have in accounts payable. Businesses are also under tremendous economic pressure. And this is putting new pressure on accounts payable. 62% of all businesses have experienced lower revenues because of the pandemic. Many of us are experiencing lower profits. Some of us are having cash flow issues. And it's no surprise in that environment that two-thirds of businesses expect to reduce their spending in response to a tough economy. But doing that is going to be easier said than done for most of our departments. One quarter of businesses say that the pandemic's made it harder for them to rein in their spending. And the reason is, is that it's really difficult to lay our hands on the information we need to know who we're spending with and what we're spending it on when our employees are working from home. We simply can't wander over to somebody's cubicle and ask these questions. And the thing is, most of you were doing a lousy job of managing spending before the pandemic. In a survey from earlier this year, before the pandemic started, three quarters of businesses admitted that their spend management needed work. You gotta wonder just how bad a job were businesses doing? Really bad, really, really bad. Most businesses said they only had tight control over 75% of their spending. Now, if I asked you, would you be okay if only 70, if only 25% of the money your company spent was wasted or out of control? Well, you'd think I was nuts. And yet that was the reality for most businesses. And size further complicates things for us. The challenge of paying suppliers, well, it only becomes bigger as we grow. Complicated global and M&A business structures, well, they're the norm in today's business environment. There's plenty of companies out there with international divisions, acquisitions, subsidiaries, brands, entities, shared services centers. And many of these companies have disparate AP processes that they must manage in each of these entities, just like the company pictured on this slide. So what do your processes look like then? Well, in a nutshell, it's a nightmare. Businesses with multiple entities, they have different systems to integrate, complex processes to try and navigate, manage, and far-flung AP teams working in each of these entities. Just think about the time and effort just to do PO matching and invoice processing for each of these entities on the screen. Long before you ever make a payment, you're struggling to collect and validate and track banking information and tax forms for each of the suppliers at each of these entities. Think about all the resources required to make payments in a local currency. You gotta log into multiple bank portals. You gotta manage multiple banking relationships. You gotta pay lots of bank fees. Think about all the payments that must be reconciled, the hundreds of spreadsheets to do it at the entity level. And then you do it all over again at the headquarters level. And many of you don't even have complete integration from each of your entities back to the headquarters. So what happens? Well, now you can't roll up values for financial reporting and close the books. So when it comes to the financial close, well, generating those reports to see the total view across all those entities, well, you're probably doing it manually, and it's probably taking a lot of time, and it's also probably really, really risky. So in a nutshell, there's a lot of interdependent tasks that go into getting your suppliers paid. You need to onboard suppliers. You need to keep the vendor master file up to date. You need to stay in compliance with tax regulations. Keep track of approvals for invoices. Deal with currency conversion communicate with suppliers about payment statuses, reconcile payments. The list goes on and on. Folks, accounts payable isn't just about paying the bills, which is the common perception that many people have. It's all of these things put together, and oftentimes they're done manually. Not only is that inefficient, it also adds risk to the process, risk of human error, risk of being out of compliance, risk of failing an audit, risk of hefty fines. 
And you know what? If your knees are already buckling, remote working has made things harder. The sudden shift to remote working, well, it's disrupted the entire accounts payable life cycle. We asked you that poll question just a little while ago about which process has been most impacted by remote working. The dirty secret is they've all been impacted by remote working. It's just different degrees. 27% of AP leaders say invoice receipt has been most impacted by work from home. 22% say approval workflows, exceptions, resolution, and payment processing have been most impacted. 7% say they're having trouble capturing data now that their staff work remotely. This speaks to the impact of remote working on our operations. Now, many of you have created workarounds to try and address the challenges created by our remote working arrangements. But these workarounds really might be creating more issues than they solve. Workarounds such as routing invoices via email. Yeah, I know a lot of you people are doing it. Well, when you're doing that, think about it. Email's not secure. You have no way to ensure segregation of duty. You have no chain of custody assurance. You can't track actions taken on an invoice. You don't have ready access to audit information. And there's no way to stop images and data from being deleted ahead of deadlines. Do those email routing still sound like such a good idea? Of course not, and that's why AP departments are prioritizing automation. 71% of AP departments plan to automate their AP function further in 2020. Even those organizations that describe themselves as largely automated, they have plans to deploy more technology. Only 6% of you are throwing in the proverbial towel and won't budge from your manual AP existence. Good luck with that. AP leaders are also confident that they are going to be able to get senior management sign off on these automation initiatives. 63% of AP leaders believe their management is more open to automation during the economic downturn. And why is that? Well, for most of us, Automation can't get here soon enough. While consumers have largely ditched paper checks in favor of alternate electronic alternatives, checks still represent an awful lot of our B2B payments. And the same is true when it comes to paper invoices. 81% of AP departments say they still make some portion of their supplier payments using a paper check. And what's so surprising to me about that is just how dissatisfied most of us are with those paper checks. Compared to other methods of payment, paper checks rank eighth in satisfaction ahead of only cryptocurrency, whatever the devil that is. And you know what? Paper checks have a below average satisfaction rating, kind of like a New York Jets football fan. And, and interestingly, newer payment methods such as same-day ACH and e-payables, they have much higher satisfaction than paper checks. And one reason for all of this is that paper checks are so bloody expensive. Studies show that it costs $5.95 on average to pay a supplier with a paper check. This includes the cost for check stock and postage and envelopes and wasted employee time and monthly maintenance fees. And then when you consider all the time that we spend chasing down check information, the money we spend on bank fees to replace lost checks, and the losses associated with check fraud, well, now, now, folks, the real cost of paying suppliers with a check is a whole lot much higher. And the fact is we don't have time for all the manual steps associated with paying suppliers with paper checks anymore, especially when we're working from home. All across the accounts payable life cycle, we're bogged down by lots Lots and lots of manual processes. All the while, well, now we're still trying to comply with business rules and best practices and regulations and auditor guidelines for how it is we ought to be paying our suppliers. 
of the typical accounts payable practitioner's time is spent on manual processes such as those listed on our slide. In fact, many of you AP managers out there, you spend more time each day on heads down transaction processing that on the managerial tests you were hired for. No wonder everyone thinks that AP is a tactical back office function. Well, I've got news for you. A lot of businesses have already begun to rethink accounts payable, and they're doing it with electronic payments. Before the pandemic, 41% of businesses made at least half of their payments to suppliers with a paper check. The smaller your business, the higher the percentage of check payments you were likely to make. Well, since the start of the pandemic, the percentage of businesses that make at least half of their payments by check has declined by a full seven percentage points. Now, if you think that's impressive, and it is, consider this. Before the pandemic, none of the businesses surveyed by IOFM made all of their payments to suppliers electronically. Let's face it, we were writing a check to somebody, the person who brought us pizza for Gladys's retirement party, the guy who mowed the lawn, whatever. But since the pandemic started, 3% of you now pay all of your suppliers electronically. You've quit checks. What does this all mean? Well, it means that over the past six months, businesses have made more progress in migrating away from paper checks than they made in the previous several years. And there's no question that some businesses had no choice but to migrate to electronic payments during the pandemic, right? In some cases, it simply wasn't safe to send people into the office to cut checks. But there's lots of other reasons that businesses were migrating to paper checks, away from paper checks, long before the pandemic. Compared to paper checks, electronic payments are cheaper. They're less risky. They're easier for suppliers to process. They're faster to settle. But the most compelling reason to automate payments to suppliers is that it helps position the business to be more scalable. And it helps us manage this work from home environment. And that brings us to our next poll question, which is about to be displayed on your screen. This time we want to know what percentage of your organization's payments to suppliers are made with a paper check? All of them? 75% to 99% of them? 50% to 74% of them, 25% to 49% of your payments to suppliers are made with a paper check, 1% to 24%, or none of them. You've quit paper checks. Take a moment to respond to the poll question now displayed in your screen. I will discuss the results in just a moment. So, Derek, why is it it's taken so darn long for businesses to quit checks? Well, I mean, anything takes long uh, these days. And change is a, is a hard thing for a lot of organizations. And if something's working fairly well or there's no serious ramifications from it, uh, it gets kind of the short stick. But um, I think with the work from home situation right now, we're seeing uh, a, a large migration uh, into more electronic payments. Is there a perception among some senior managers that there's no reason to migrate off paper checks? They, they work, why bother? Yeah, I think the old school thinking was there was that float period that you could kind of skate by. And um, I think that the ROI on that has been disproven at this point. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's just lack of respect for the process in some ways. What's the biggest danger for businesses that or AP leaders that listen in on our conversation today and say, no, nope, I'm good. I'm going to be one of the 6% that just sticks to my paper existence, whether it's invoice processing or supplier payments. What's the big danger for, for those AP leaders and, and their businesses they work for? Um, I mean, there's two. One is obviously the risk involved in paper checks. And, uh, you know, you're one typo away from messing with your entire uh, uh, you're one comma or one zero away from, you know, really hurting your cash flow situation and trying to solve that. And then also you have to look at your supply chain. Um, if you are kind of uh, an inefficient payer or an ineffective payer, your suppliers are going to note that. And, you know, when right now supplies could be problematic to get from one person to another, um, they might not look on, upon you as <laughs> 
like the the reliable customer that they need and so <laughs> your supply your suppliers could end up going somewhere else we asked our attendees what percentage of their organization's payments to suppliers are made with paper check this is very interesting most of the folks in the line are making most of their payments to suppliers electronically Derek 53 percent of our attendees are making most of their payments electronically however 44 percent of our attendees are still paying most of their suppliers using a paper check does this surprise you no it's very spread out um, and uh, that's the most curious part is like how spread out it is yeah, I was pleased to see that nobody is completely check-based. That's a that, that's a that's a that's a good win. We'll take that one. Um, what's your message to the to the to the organization on the line today? That's predominantly check-based. I mean, there presumably there could be folks listening in that are in the ninety percent in terms of their their payment volume being check-based. W- what would be the biggest piece of advice you want to leave them with today? Um, it's more of a question, I think. Is like why. <laughs> Well, why do you want to go this route? And um, there's no reason to, other than kind of like I said, old processes. But you know, the new processes out there are not that new. They're very reliable, and uh, and the benefits of getting that settlement faster, reconciling faster, knowing where you are within the month um, sooner, so you can make plans. This is the time to make plans, and that those plans can't be. Uh, you know, your six-month plan is is probably down to a three-month plan at this point, and so being able to see where you are within your organization, um, things are changing quickly uh, for the world economy, and that impacts where you are as an as a as an organization. Um, so being able to spot that sooner and understand how things are going sooner, and your cash outlay, I think all of those things play into. Uh, we want to know sooner. We want to be able to pay faster and get um, get acknowledgement for those payments sooner. With remote working showing no signs of leaving us anytime soon, it's imperative that AP leaders find ways to optimize the way it is that their department is working in this new remote working environment. It's time to modernize your operations in the short term, while setting up your organization for long-term success. Simply put, Derek and I believe you've got to evolve your core processes to meet the challenges of these fast-changing times. And there's 10 ways that you can do just that. Grab your legal pad and pen. Here we go. The first best practice is to optimize work from home. For optimum work from home productivity, well, it's essential to institute digital processes and digital approval workflows by upgrading from manual operations to electronic. You simply can't adapt paper-based processes to a remote work environment. It's also important to ensure strong governance with built-in controls and audit trails. Email approvals need not apply. And you're going to want to improve visibility into financial activities while managing your operations across multiple geographies and entities. So we need to find processes and technologies that work regardless of where our employees are. Not surprisingly, one quarter of AP leaders say that ensuring productivity is their top priority now that their staff is working remotely. About one quarter want to find ways to ensure that invoices get paid on time. And more than one in five recognize that they must shed paper in the remote working environment. All of this suggests that you need to optimize work from home. It's also important to find ways to share information with your staff when you can't meet with them one-on-one. You want to start by establishing ways to collaborate with your staff and to conduct frequent check-ins. You want to set up daily stand-ups with your team. That's imperative for effective communications. You also want to ensure that your team understands why specific tasks are being prioritized. We don't always have those opportunities for those quick conversations to explain our thinking. So you want to find a way to fill in those gaps. 
when staff work from home, it's also imperative to evaluate and adjust your strategic plan. You want to invest your time in scenario planning and building models that can adjust to various situations. As Derek said, things are changing fast, whether that's our operations, our technologies, or our economy. We need to be ready for whatever is coming down the pike. And when you have complete and real-time data around crucial business metrics, now you're going to be able to make better informed decisions and better align your operation with what's going on in your organization's strategic suite. Implementing smart cost controls, well, that's another critical step to ensuring success in a remote working environment. In accounts payable, many time consuming functions are still completely manual. Well, now's the time to streamline operations and to cut those costs. You want to look for solutions that are going to deliver sustainable, incremental improvements in staff productivity. You also want a solution with built-in controls for managing remote operations. You don't want a solution that's being force-fit into today's environment. You want one that was built from the ground up to allow people to work from anywhere. The migration to remote working also creates an opportunity to step back and evaluate your current technology. You want to assess where you stand with your technology stack. Being able to access and approve everything digitally, well, those are the table stakes in today's work from home environment. Accounts payable leaders should strive for a tech stack that includes cloud ERP, cloud accounts payable automation, a billing system, financial planning tools, advanced payroll technology, and business intelligence tools. These are the things senior management is going to look for from our accounts payable departments moving forward. And if you're a global company, well, it's going to be essential to be able to function virtually and on demand. So what you want to do is evaluate the capabilities of your subsidiaries to ensure that you have a single, scalable, and secure platform that's going to provide you with a consolidated financial view. If you're relying on Excel spreadsheets to do your reporting across your entities, you've got some work to do here. You also want to look for tools with real-time integrations into your ERP or ERPs, and one that provides you with data visibility to help accelerate your financial close. We can't have time anymore for all hands on deck during the financial close. You also want to ensure regulatory compliance. It can be really tricky when staff are working from home. And let's face it, your business can't risk increased tax and GDPR penalties or fraud losses or regulatory fines at a time like this. So to prevent any issues, you want to implement KPMG certified tax compliance. You want to look for a solution with EU, U.S. Privacy Shield protection. You want to find a solution that does OFAC sanctioned screen checks, that does fraud identification capabilities. All of this will help you steer clear of non-compliance penalties at a time when we just can't have them. When you think about these compliance issues, well, it's no surprise that traceability is the characteristic that AP leaders are looking for most in a payment solution, not hot button topics such as ease of reconciliation or cost or speed. No, AP leaders recognize that those things are of little value if transactions are not tightly controlled and compliant. You also want to think about leaning on your partners. When you partner with a technology solutions provider that can scale with your business, now you have all of the strategic horsepower you need. So when you're evaluating prospective partners, I want you to be on the lookout for fly-by-night rinky-dink technology providers. What you want to do is find a partner that has high retention rates, high transaction numbers, global reach 
reach, robust integrations, the financial backing to invest in the technologies that you will need today as well as tomorrow. These are the attributes that will indicate a provider that's best in class, that can be there when the economy comes back. Ensuring security is the next priority in our work-from-home reality. Maintaining strong financial controls, well, that can be tricky when everyone's working remotely. We simply can't look over people's shoulders. We can't see what it is they're doing. And let's face it, manual processes are risky. And this is especially true when manual tests are performed away from our controlled office. We simply have no control over these documents anymore. So how is it that you can mitigate your fraud and compliance risk? Well, here's how you do it. You look for an automated solution that includes things like multi-factor authentications, IP restrictions, data protection and encryption, role-based security, audit trails, complete segregation of duties, and automated backups. These are the types of strong financial controls that can help ensure that your company is not exposed to more risk. And you have no time to waste, folks. 30% of AP leaders say that their department has experienced at least, at least one fraud attack in 2020. 40% of AP leaders say their department has experienced multiple fraud attacks. Fraudsters know that the operational disruption caused by remote working creates a golden opportunity. Unless, that is, you take measures to plug those gaps. The common denominator in all of these recommendations I just gave you is that you've got to automate your operations. And so the 10th best practice for remote working is not to automate some things. It's to automate everything. Work from home environments demand solutions that are 100% cloud-based and provide you with 24-7 collaborative access to your financial team. So when you're looking for solutions, look for ones that automate accounts payable end-to-end. -end. That's right, from supplier setup to invoice handling to payment processing. The goal, well, it's to find a robust technology that's going to allow your organization to continue working as normal from home. Scratch that. To continue working even better from home. If you already have a system place, well, now might be the time to upgrade. Working from home might have told on some of the deficiencies in that existing technology. Folks, if you follow the best practices I just laid out, it's going to ensure that your organization can optimize its remote working environment. And you're going to have an AP function that's not only more scalable, but it's going to be more modern. A modern AP department looks nothing like the one you may be accustomed to, even if you already have some technology. An AP modern AP department, it's 100% cloud-based. It uses digital approval workflows. It supports electronic payments built in. It has on-demand onboarding, a consolidated financial view, complete data visibility for the financial close, and it integrates seamlessly with any ERP. What's more, a modern AP department can support your various business units and subsidiaries and locations no matter where people are working. Accounts Payable has been undergoing a game-changing evolution in 2020. We're working at home, and companies that implement best practices and leverage the latest advances in technology, well, they're going to be the ones that benefit most from this new reality. And make no mistake about it, automation is key. It's going to combat manual issues, and it's going to allow you to take out those high costs, those log documents, those late payments. And it does all of this by providing a standardized AP process across the enterprise, the ability to automatically route invoices for approval, and to 
process invoices straight through. Staff will only have to intervene when absolutely necessary. AP departments that deploy this type of a solution, well, now they're going to be able to help the business scale faster, increase its cash flow, extend its DPO, lower its cost of goods, and help ensure the strength of the supply chain. This paves the road from recovery to scalability. And that brings us to our final poll question, which is now displayed on your screen. We want to know which of the following are your top priority post-pandemic? Which of the following is your top priority post-pandemic? Is it to reduce costs? Is it to improve staff productivity? Is it to increase invoice processing accuracy? Is it to accelerate cycle times? Is it to reduce vulnerability to fraud and compliance issues? Or is it to make more efficient payments? Take a moment to respond to the poll question. Now displayed on your screen, and we're going to discuss the results in just a moment. So we've laid out the case for why it is automation is so critical to supporting work from home, Derek. What would be the single biggest piece of advice you'd give to the people listening in today when they go about evaluating that technology? Um, find a partner that works with you. Uh, I think you mentioned that as well. Uh, there are certainly um, a lot of options, and um, when you look at the the amount of uh, AP automation technology that's out there, uh, being able to identify uh, the ones that fit you, um, are, it's critical um, because that makes change management easier uh, throughout the process. We asked our attendees which of the following was their top priority post-pandemic. 33% of the folks on the line, Derek, said they want to make more efficient payments. 26% of our attendees said they want to reduce vulnerability to fraud and compliance issues. 23% want to increase invoice processing accuracy, and 21% want to reduce costs. The question, of course, becomes... How do I go about doing that? Well, to provide you with an action plan to get you started for modernizing your AP department as you work from home, I'm going to hand it off to Derek. Derek? Thanks, Mark. And thank you all for attending this presentation. I've been with Topalti for over 5.8 years. And full disclosure, I am not a finance person, uh, much to the chagrin of my mom. <laughs> but uh, I've been on the marketing side for a lot of technology companies, and it's always kind of the same story. There's some manual process that needs solving, and the business um, in, in need of jumping to the next level looks to software and automation as a way to do that. Um, for marketing departments, sales teams, IT, support engineering, we've all virtually had uh, a department. To, we've all had tools to support those departments. Um, and that's always been true. But what's unique right now within the finance organization is um, getting some of that technology love. Uh, especially today, we're all working from home, and the paperless back office is not a wish anymore. It's actually a necessity. So technology that can modernize finance operations, um, it really advances beyond solving one or two AP pain points to address the entire holistic payables process. You know, that's the goal of very strategic, high-velocity finance teams. You don't need to see that one. <laughs> uh, so Topalti works with over 1,000 companies. Uh, many are probably brands you recognize, and proudly these customers stick with us at a very high retention rate. Um, in fact, this month we closed a round of funding of $150 million, and that led to a valuation of just over $2 billion. What the industry and our customers see is that we're as important to them at the inf as we are at an infrastructure level. So like an ERP or their spreadsheets, they actually rely on Topalti. CFOs and controllers, they've exchanged their bank fobs um, for us to help pay their thousands of suppliers um, mm -hmm. very easily. In a matter of clicks, you can pay a thousand suppliers worldwide. Uh, and we do this with uh, security built in, it's accurate, it's fully audible. Um, in fact, our customers, we were talking about checks, uh, total within the organization, we come under 5% of all transactions through paper checks. So in other words, 
Um, over 95% of our transactions are electronic. Uh, we've been able to move our customers off paper checks significantly, and uh, it's really exciting, I think, when companies are able to embrace that and they realize, wow, you've just taken all this work off the table. We can do these other things we care about. Um, especially, you know, within the pandemic, you're still looking for the future, right? So six months, 12 months, two years down the road, um, you bring into policy, you're, you're going to solve the problem, your current problem, but then you're also getting yourself set up uh, for your growth and rebirth. Um, one last point I can tell you about our, uh, you know, our audience tends to be more senior um, than most other webinars. Uh, and that's because you have this big picture thinking. Is there a finance leader out there who's not looking to optimize their headcount? You know, finance has already set an example for the organization around efficiency and accuracy. So do they choose to spend headcount on someone at an analyst level who can help with long-term planning and spend management and compliance? Or do they use that headcount to hire an AP clerk uh, to key in invoices, get approvals, they may pay around. Topalti solves the payables challenges for today, but also readies you for tomorrow. Takes 80% of the workload off, um, to, and we save those companies that time. They can reallocate all that, um, all that potential human capital to be able to get things done. Um, it's a fully baked end-to-end -end platform that takes you from supplier management uh, is able to help with tax compliance, processing invoices and workflow for invoices, then obviously making payments um, and uh, coming back around to kind of reconciling back to your ERP and getting you the reporting you need for, uh, for all your payment activity. So um, that's all I have. Uh, back to Mark. We have a number of questions from attendees. Derek, if you haven't submitted your question or you've thought of another one, go ahead and use the Q&A panel on your screen and send them to me electronically. We had two questions wondering about the same topic. Derek, they're wondering how it is your solution helps reduce the risk of business email compromise attacks. Yeah, so um, the transactions don't actually happen over email. Uh, we take on the, we have a built-in supplier portal, and that's used to um, onboard your suppliers, gather their tax information, get their uh, payment details, in other words, you know, their ACH routing codes or, or their wire routing codes, or in the case of like um, SEPA and some of the other local bank transfers within uh, the global economic banking community, um, we do all of that. Uh, through this secure portal, um, they're able to either email an invoice or uh, uh, upload their invoice to the portal. That invoice gets processed um, through OCR and directly keyed into our platform, and all the routing is automatic because we'll learn, basically, as invoices come in, who to route it to, um, and send it out for different levels of approval. And then at that point, you know, once the invoice has been approved, um, because we already know the payment information, we immediately start queuing up invoices for payment, um, and you can basically schedule payment runs weekly, bi-monthly, whatever it is you need, um, to make payments directly out to uh, the various banking entities that are out there. Um, you yourself don't have to care as, a, as somebody who manages the process. You only need to know who am I paying, when am I paying them, and how much. Susan wants to know more about onboarding when staff works from home. How do you support other constituents across the enterprise outside of accounts payable? Um, I'm, do they mean onboarding by suppliers? I'm not I sure. believe so, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, it is a single portal. It's a web portal that's hosted um, off of Topalti, or in some limited cases, you can actually embed the portal into your own website, um, and it's fully secured. Uh, and again, they, the supplier basically takes them, they, they take themselves through that process, um, and uh, that way you ensure that when they're invested into the process, um, they want to be paid, they can choose 
various payment methods. We actually have this mechanism um, for uh, payment method transaction fee uh, allocation so that, like, let's say you don't want to pay check, but mm -hmm. you want to offer it. You could potentially attach a fee to paper check. Um, so when they choose paper check, maybe it charges them 10 bucks for it. Uh, and um, that de de emphasizes and disincentivizes them um, around paper checks. They, they want to ba basically choose something a little bit more uh, auditable and traceable. That's a really expensive check in that case. <laughs> well, you know, that, that's one way. It's like uh, if you want to convince people to come off check, then make it more expensive and hurt them a little bit. Um, l let them choose the much more efficient means. Teresa asks, how do you convince suppliers to submit invoices on your portal? Many of our very small and some of our very large suppliers won't do so. Yeah, so for, let me take the large ones first. Um, you can always um, uh, upload your own invoices um, that you get. Um, and so that, that so if you get a bill from like AT&T, AT&T is not, AT not going to come to your portal and, and upload anything. So um, the, we have the mechanism to basically accept invoices that way. So basically we treat them like bills. Um, in terms of your smaller uh, uh, suppliers, once they've onboarded, um, which is a fairly, you know, it's a, it's a five minute process. Once they've onboarded, they also get notification of payments. They get notification of status. Um, if there's a problem with a payment, we alert them proactively. Um, so it's not, it actually saves them some time from having to kind of hunt you down <laughs> and try and get uh, acknowledgement that, oh, did you get the, did you get the invoice I sent you? Um, the other thing is, you know, rather than uploading to the portal, you can actually email to an alias. And that email alias will process the invoice, get it keyed in. Um, we have a fairly strong, robust method for OCR that's backed with uh, a, a managed service that uh, goes into the uh, OCR results and actually makes sure that, okay, it's matching the invoice. A human being will look at it if necessary. Um, and that process goes by pretty quick. It's like uh, uh, very touchless from that standpoint. Ken is wondering whether you're about the growth of virtual cards versus ACH. Are you seeing high growth in virtual cards, just at ACH, both? Um, you know, we don't have a virtual card option yet. Um, it's something we're looking at. Uh, but in terms of the comparison, uh, honestly, it's about kind of how you want to set it up. Uh, generally, if virtual cards are great if you're looking to recoup some amount of, you're, you're basically trying to uh, earn some rewards for offering virtual card. Um, that's its main benefit. Um, but uh, we don't, so I can't really answer that um, because we don't offer virtual card. Well, I think the answer is, in your case, you're seeing growth at ACH. That's all the time we have for this webinar. Derek, thank you so much for an thank excellent you, presentation and for sharing your insights. And thank you all for taking the time out of your days to join us. And with that, I'm going to hand it back to Laura. Ms. Laura. Thank you, Derek, and thank you, Mark, for a great webinar today. I have a few housekeeping notes before we officially sign off. Uh, just a reminder, if you could please fill out the short evaluation form that will appear once you close out of the webinar, webinar window so that we can better serve your needs in future webinars, that would be greatly appreciated. Also, many of you have asked about the on-demand materials. Just a reminder, everyone will receive an email within three business days um, with the hand, handout link, the PDF handout link, as well as the recording of today's live webinar, so you can play that back. So again, look for that in your inbox within the next three business days. Thank you again to Derek and Mark for a great webinar today, and thank you to all of our attendees for taking the time out of your busy day to join us. Uh, this webinar was brought to you by IOFM and sponsored by Topalti. Thank you all, and have a great rest of your day.